Tom Homan is now the new border czar appointed by Trump on his first day in office. Check out who he is. President-elect Trump has chosen Congresswoman Elise Stefanik to be his U.S. ambassador to the U.N. This comes after Trump announced that his choice to lead the lead border security, a man who served as the leader of ICE during Trump's first administration. ABC's Christian Cordero this morning has the details. This morning, former Immigration and Customs Enforcement Director Tom Homan, who carried out one of the most controversial border policies during Donald Trump's first term, is set to return to the White House. The president-elect announced Homan will serve as border czar, tapped to fulfill Trump's campaign promise of the largest mass deportation in American history. Homan recently spoke with 60 Minutes. I hear a lot of people say, you know, the talk of a mass deportation is racist, it's, it's, uh, it's threatening to immigrant community is not threatening to the immigrant community. It should be threatening to the illegal immigrant community. As ICE director, Homan led the zero tolerance policy that separated parents from their children at the border. The ACLU estimates between 500 and 1,000 families have yet to be reunited. When asked if there's a way to carry out mass deportations without separating families, Homan said this. Of course there is. Families can be deported together. Trump also weighing in on the new Republican-controlled Senate, saying whoever leads it must allow recess appointments. That would give Trump temporary power to fill vacancies without Senate approval. The issue came up in 2014 when the Supreme Court ruled against President Obama's use of recess appointments. Now, Senators John Thune, John Cornyn, and Rick Scott are each running for Senate Majority Leader. And on recess appointments, they've all signaled support. Trump says two members of his first administration will not be back. Former ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley and former secretary of state Mike Pompeo. They have so this dude is no joke. He is no joke. He is not somebody to be played with. He is not somebody to be tolerated with. Dude said they asked him, they said, is it any way that we can carry this out to where it doesn't 100 percent up in families and all of this stuff? <laughs> Quentin is crazy. <laughs> I'll talk to you in a minute, Quentin. They said, is there any way that you can carry this out to where it doesn't, you know, not separating families? He said, yeah, we can carry this out without it separating families. We're going to deport everybody at the same time. You know what's wrong with this whole immigration system? You know what's wrong with what's been happening and how things are played out? I'll tell you exactly what was wrong. What's wrong with it is that so many people have been able to come over here without actually going through it the right way, and they've been breaking the rules for so long, that it now it seems like you guys are entitled to be here when you came over here illegally. Like, for example, somebody sent me a TikTok where a person was saying, I can't believe it, I'm going to have to reapply for my visa, and they were saying a bunch of other stuff, right? I'm going to have to do this. And, you know, I've been over here for a long time. And even though I overstayed my visa or I overstayed my work permit or I overstayed this, now it's just because I've been in this country. It's like, you do know that that don't fly nowhere else. I was listening to the Canadian prime minister and the Canadian prime minister, because it's a lot of people that are saying, oh, I'm leaving America because I don't like what's going on over there. And I don't like what's happening in the election and stuff like that. And the Canadian prime minister, they said, well, what about people that's actually moving to Canada? And she said, I'm going to tell you this. We choose who can stay and who can leave. And we strongly enforce what's happening at our borders. They don't do this anywhere else except for the United States of America. This is the only place where you can break the rules and then feel entitled to be able to do what you want to do. Don't you know that, listen, where I come from, if you get a job under false pretenses, let's say, for example, you lied and said that you had a college degree. And let's say you've been working there for 5, 10, 15 years, right? And then somehow, some way, technology advances to where they discover or they go and revisit your resume or they go and figure out what's going on. If they find out that you lied and you don't actually have a college degree, they will fire you. They don't care how long you've been in that role. They don't care how long you've worked for the company. If you don't have what you say you had, but somehow you got in and then they able to revisit whether or not you had it, they will fire you. 
This is the only country where people feel entitled to do stuff after they broke the rules and broke the law. He not messing around now. This is elect Trump's new cabinet is starting to take shape because overnight while you were sleeping, he tapped Tom Homan to be his border czar. Trump saying, quote, there is nobody better at policing and controlling our borders. Likewise, Tom Homan will be in charge of all deportation of illegal aliens back to their country of origin. He worked with the president to come up with this job description, so let's hear from him. In his first interview after the major announcement, incoming border czar Tom Homan. Tom, congratulations to you. It's bad for us. We lose you as a contributor. What went into the decision and the position? Well, look, I've, I've been on the... Uh... I've been on this network for years complaining about what this administration did to this border. I've been yelling and screaming about it, telling them what, what they need to do to fix it. So when the president asked me, would you come back and fix it? Of course I have to. I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. So look, I'm honored the president asked me to come back and help solve this national security crisis. So I'm looking forward to it. And look, I love Fox. I love the family there. And, and uh, But I think I think that the calling is, is clear. I got to go back and help because I, every morning I get up, Every morning I'm pissed off about what this administration did to the most secure board in my lifetime. So I'm going to go back and do what I can to fix it. So, Tom, let's talk about the, the job, because you're not an amateur. You've been doing this for years. Uh, you were a big cop. Also, you worked the border before, went over to ICE. You've done it all. What does the process look like? Because I think some people get the impression that you're shooting from your hip, but you know what you're doing here, right? I know exactly what I'm doing. And look, this is the second time I came out of retirement. Uh, for this president, and because it matters. And look, I was a board of children. You know what? Listen, listen, look at this guy. Look at this guy. Look at this hard nose. You know who he looks like? He looks like Hank from Breaking Bad. If y'all ever watch Breaking Bad, it's one of the greatest, it's the second greatest um, series of all time. Some, some people say Sopranos is in there. I say that The Wire is the greatest series of all time, followed by Breaking Bad and then possibly The Sopranos, and then y'all can throw everything else behind that. This guy looks like Hank. Hank from Breaking Bad. Let me show you what Hank looked like. Hank was a hard nose. He was Hank Schrader. That's what his name was, Hank Schrader. He was a hard nose, no nonsense. I will bust you and, and not care about the consequences. We'll figure out the consequences later. D, uh, all of that stuff. He was not a mess around type of guy. Hank was looking to take Walt down. This is Hank. This is Hank. He looks just like Hank. Look just like Hank. Hank Schrader was no joke on Breaking Bad. He said, I'm going to bust you. I'm going to bust you. Look at how he has his... his his uh, AirPods sticking out of his ear like this. He got his AirPods. This is a no-nonsense guy. No-nonsense guy. He does not mess around. He will have you deported as fast as you can say. De this is Hank Schrader in the flesh. If y'all don't know who Hank Schrader is, go and watch some clips on YouTube of Breaking Bad, but he is not messing around. I wore that uniform, and I'm proud that I wore that uniform. So, and I was an ICE agent. I was the first ICE director that actually came up through the ranks. So the 20,000 men and women that worked for me, I didn't ask them to do anything. I didn't do myself because I was one of them. So, look, I, I know the border, uh, and, and I know there's a lot of great patriots. Look, I shut my phone off Friday night because I couldn't handle the phone calls, the texts, and, and emails from thousands of, of uh, ICE agents and border patrol agents excited about the rumor I'm coming back. But more importantly than that, thousands of retired agents, retired border patrol agents, retired military that want to come in and volunteer to help awesome. this president secure That's the border incredible. and do the deportation operation. So I've been off the grid for yep. three days just because I couldn't handle all the phone calls. And plus, of the death threats rolling in, I, I, my, I, I'm, my family's not at home right now because of that starting. But, you know, that's something we're going to deal with. They're not going to bully me away. They're not going to shut me up. They're not going to make me go away. This is the biggest national security vulnerability this nation has seen since 9-11. We have to fix it. And it's one of the reasons Kamala Harris lost and Donald Trump won. So, so Tom, you just mentioned deportations. I know uh, during the last Trump administration, when you were there, 
Uh, they did have the large scale worksite, essentially uh, raids, where they would go into a place and there would be hundreds of people who were in the country illegally. I know on 60 Minutes, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you said that those would continue or, uh, under Donald Trump in the next administration. What do you have planned? Well, I, I know you don't want to give away the whole game book, but you do have deportations, mass workplace stuff planned. Uh, any other kind of category of deportations of interest? Look, as the president, as the president said on stage many times, which I agree with 100 percent, it's going to be the same was during the first administration, which is it's just a hell of a lot more of them because 10 million people have entered this country illegally under the Biden administration, or they actually let into this country, even though it's, it's, it's a violation of federal law, what they've been doing, the abuse of the parole authority. But look, I've, I've been clear, President Trump's been clear, public safety threats and national security threats will be the priority, because they mm -hmm. have to be. They propose the most danger to this country. So we're going to prioritize those uh, groups, those who always have final orders, those that had, those that had due process at great taxpayer expense, and the federal judge says you must go home, and they didn't. They became a fugitive. So, and, and as far as work site, where does like operations have to happen? Here's why, Steve. Where do we find most victims of sex trafficking and forced labor trafficking? At work sites. And, and the Biden administration shut down work sites. On one, on one point, we say we care about sex trafficking and human trafficking. Then they shut down work site enforcement, which is one of the main areas we find the victims of this. Mm. I want to add one more thing, another priority. This administration has lost over 300,000 yes. children. That, that, that were smuggling this country by criminal cartels they can't find. Look That's how angry he is. We need to save these children because some of these children are in forced labor, some of these children are in sex trafficking, some of these children are living a life of hell every day. And we need to save these children and get them back with their families. You know, look how angry he is. This guy is at genuinely mad at the fact that this administration has failed so many children and failed so many families and failed the American citizens and failed to protect people against themselves. The only reason that people felt compelled to fly over here and come over here and run over here and run over the borders and do what they want to do and stay as long as they want to stay is because we didn't have no control. When you let the people in the asylum run things, this is what happens. And so now they all feel like somebody took their blankie because somebody is coming in and saying, listen, we going to do it differently. We're not going to allow for people to just do what they want to do when they want to do it. And we're going to get some control. Tom, first of all, uh, congratulations to you. And I'm so glad for the Border Patrol that morale is already being lifted. They have just been beaten down um, by the policies of this last administration. I, I'm really encouraged by what you're saying because I think the toughest part of your job isn't, isn't the deportation. It's dealing with the propaganda from the other side saying yep. that what you're doing is not, um, is not compassionate, that it's, it's not humanitarian. And what do you plan to do? I, I, I'm glad you mentioned the, the, the 300,000 children that are missing, um, but how are you going to deal with those kinds of attacks, even though you know that this open border has led to sex trafficking of children and, and an exponential increase of child labor, illegal child labor? I, I, frankly, I don't care what people think about me, especially on the left. <laughs> Now, again, I, I, you know, when you have a historic crisis, a crisis this big, here's what they need to know. When you, when you have a crisis this big that overwhelms the Border Patrol, where the more, majority of Border Patrol are no longer on patrol, they're making sandwiches, they're changing diapers, they're making baby formula, they're making hospital runs, they're making airport runs. When you take most of Border Patrol agents off the border to deal with humanitarian crisis, that's when a fentanyl comes across to kill a quarter million Americans. That's when the sex trafficking has increased 600%. That's when no one suspected terrorists cross this country. They've had a record of people on terrorist watches that have been arrested at the southern border. That's why you have over 2 million gotaways. How many of them came to our country sponsoring terror? So I don't care what anybody's opinion is on illegal immigration. When you create a crisis this big, all these other bad things happen. That's I agree. I 100% agree, and I think that this guy is definitely the right pick.